for being with us this morning. Amen. Thank Bless you, Pastor. You. Bless you. know, I want to say before you leave okay. that you've been such a blessing. You're in Pastor Katani to my Bless family. You. Bless you. Um, I was sharing with you that, you know, we often talk to you, talk about you being the Jeremiah 315 pastors. Oh, wow. That feed us with knowledge yeah. and with understanding so we can get about doing the business of God. So I want to thank you for being a gift not only to my family, but to, uh, to the nation. Because there is a new company of leaders that God's raising up mm. um, that's going to bring uh, a transformative change yeah. to the landscape of the world. Bless and we need you right now. And oh, I want to thank you, you for you, everything you. that you're doing bless to you. make destiny happen for us. So Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Thanks thank for you, being sir. a friend. Amen. Absolutely. God, may God Amen. use you. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Praise Amen. God. God bless you, family. You know, I'm so um, blessed um, to be here. And to be a part of this conversation that we've been having. Um, for those of us that have been following the teachings of um, Pastor Felix, God has been talking to us about dealing with change needed within us to manifest. He talked to us about being the Elijah people and how that was going to require us to, um, to move away from Baal's table, the table of compromise. And be willing to commit ourselves to the force of change that God is manifesting in the earth today. And as God began to deal with us as an individual, God began to say, now, I, I'm, I'm talking to you, but I want to talk to your culture. And God brought us into understanding that he was going to deal with this um, cultural bounce checks that the Western nations have been delivering um, to generation behind generation, Okay. Countries and nations and people that promised that they would be nations under God, but didn't keep their word. They've been bouncing a check that they've been sending to heaven and bouncing checks they've been sending to the people that they've been responsible for. And we're living in an hour and a time where God is calling us to manifest purpose, to walk in destiny, to understand that we all have a powerful um, responsibility to live up to what God intended us to be, to do, and to have. Can we go to the next slide? You know, I came from um, a very large family. I have five, I have, I have, um, I have five um, sisters. Everybody say, thank God for your sisters. I have three brothers, and I had two cousins that were uh, raised with us as siblings. And in that family, we all had to be very clear on what our roles and our responsibilities and our destiny uh, is for us to walk into. And so I show this picture because my dad um, this year will turn 97 years old. My mom's 94 years old. They're, they're are of sound mind and sound body. And, um, and when I was a kid, my dad used to say to me, um, um, when I get old, I'm going to live to be 75 years old. And I said to myself as a kid, why would you want to live that long? Who would want to live that long? I just thought, imagine you would look basically like a raisin, you know. <laughs> but my dad and my mother, they have had this longevity of life because they've had such a clear sense of burden and responsibility and destiny upon their lives. And, I've, and, I, and they passed that down to me, and I've passed it down to my six kids that our rent for living in this planet is us doing the work that is called destiny upon our lives. And this is a responsibility that I was given every one of us to no longer live our lives as wondering generalities, but destiny specific. If we can go to the next slide. I'm showing, uh, this next slide is reminding me of uh, the, my, my, my mindset and my, um, my assignment that God's given me for this generation. And that is to remind all of us how special we are, how unique we are. There were 500 million contractors at conception trying to be you. But you're the one that God chose. You were not born an accident. It doesn't matter if you was conceived in, in a pink Cadillac. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter if your parents were married or not married. It doesn't matter if your parents were white or black or Latino. You were born on purpose and by destiny design. 500 million heavenly contractors were trying to be you, but God chose you. And you promised at conception that you would live up to the mandate that our Father had ordained for you. Jeremiah, um, on the first chapter, verse 4 through 5, reveals to us that we existed before we got into the planet. Before we were born, he said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I knew you. 
God knew your strengths. He knew your weaknesses. He knew what you would do in the current circumstances that you were born in. You were born for destiny. And because of this destiny, every one of us have to live up to the mandate that God's given us. One of the things that I do in our work is help people to get clear about who God's called them to be. That's my mission, to help others find their true north, act on their dreams, be, do, and have everything that God has um, ordained for them. And as a result of that, God has given me and my wife and our family and our team a vision of being um, social entrepreneurs, agents of change that are using what God has given us, the knowledge of witty inventions and, and economic strategies to bring about change. And so God had, has given us a, a number of businesses that we, that we run for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. And I thank God for Pastor Felix, who often I will call and share these crazy ideas that God gave me. If you can go to the next slide. Like God had given us a vision, you know, of um, starting a gene company. And we did. And we gave a pair to Pastor Felix, and you don't know what it did to me that day that I think I saw him wearing my jeans one Sunday morning. There are things inside of us that God is calling us to manifest, that we're going to begin to be called on God to live out the responsibility. And God is like, hey, I keep getting these bounced checks from you. You wrote a check and you told me that you would be a healer. You told me that you would be an entrepreneur. You told me um, that when I put you in the position of, of um, being in the planet, you would be an educator. You told me that you would be the best mother, the best father. God is asking us to stop sending him bounce checks. We wrote this commitment to God and God is calling us to live up to it and to walk in it. We are in um, unprecedented times right now, not only in our nation, but all over the globe. God has, um, God has allowed things to happen in this planet that's causing many of us to come to a place of repentance, come to a place of change, come to a place of destiny. And we have to make a decision that we're going to put the ink of our name and our honor on a brand new check that God's calling us to write to him. A check that he is going to use to invest in the nations and the generation and in the lives of the children that God's called us to father and to mother and to uncle and to aunt. I'm holding on that because I want you to think about what you've been checked as you've been writing. I want you to think about the promises that you've made to God. Now, I, I want to speak a little prophetically a little bit to you. I want to have a conversation with you, RCF. There was a time as a prophetic teaching ministry, we were renowned for delivering um, known truth to the people of God. But God is asking us to take it up to the next level, to continue to deliver the, um, the word of God that has been written. And God wants to move us into a place where we're moving into revelation and delivering revelation to a generation to walk out the, mind, the, mind, the mandates and the assignment that God has called for them to walk in. The Lord was telling me that uh, we need to begin to ready ourselves because there is a people that God's calling, not only within the neighborhood, but all over the nation. He's calling them to come to this place and to the spaces that he's mandated us to create for people to believe and to belong and to behave. And he's calling on us to begin to see from God's eyes what it is that we're to be, to do and to have in this hour. Because there is a prophetic magnet drawing on people in the north, the south, the east, and the west to come to this place, not to be pinned in to a, um, a sheep's pen, but to be deployed out into the world to be agents of change. God is asking us to think about and to perceive how we can create new spaces and not old spaces because there is not a revised church that God is creating out of this pandemic. There's a new church. 
A new church that understands that they are not just a social construct in a society where people come together and socialize. They're understanding that they are people that are the royals. They're the royal sons and daughters of God. And they have God-like responsibilities to, um, to feed, to protect, to nurture a people that have not been a people. To transform men that have been fatherless, women that have been womenless. There is a people that God's drawing to this atmosphere who has um, lived under a failed, failed leaders and failed government and failed religious systems. And they need to hear God's word from us. They, they don't need just to hear God's word. They need to see God's word modeled and demonstrated from us. Thank you, Lord. If we can go to the next slide. Um, I had a season in my life where we planted churches. And I remember we came from a big church and we went to a, a small um, community and we started a church in a hotel. And my daughter, Destiny, said to me, Daddy, when are we going to go to church? I said, baby, we are church. We're at church. She says, where's the, um, the steeple and the people? And I'd explain to her, honey, a people is not, a church is not a, not a building. A church is a people. And God wanted me to talk to you, um, RCF, but also to all of those of you that are part of the ecclesia of the kingdom of God, the church, the called out ones. God's asking us to reimagine. To reimagine church. Because the church that God's raising up out of this is not going to be the church we came out of. A church that was reliant on physical contact with people instead of God. God wants us to reimagine a church that will be devout but not religious. Can you imagine Daniel? Then you are bringing his crosses and his Bible, studies in front of Nebuchadnezzar. Saying, thus say the word of the Lord. No, Daniel had to learn new language, new strategies to manifest purpose and destiny by the will of God. We're going to have to learn how to be the church that Jesus wants us to be. Because many of us, we're, we have been doing church, a kind of church that Jesus wouldn't know that to be church. We imagine. We imagine. Who imagined that we would have church where the people stayed at home? <laughs> Who would imagine that? And then there's some of us across the nation, we still can't imagine that kind of church. So at people's health and risk, we're trying to get them back to old church. Faster than God has ordained. God has put the nations on a timeout. This pandemic has been a timeout for you. God's put you on a time out because you've been bouncing checks and not allowing people to realize their purpose and their destiny in God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you willing to reimagine church with God? You know, the early church, they would have never imagined coming to a physical place with large numbers like that because that would have made every one of them target. They would have never imagined. But in generations, we begin to see church this way. And God is saying, family, we imagine church. I have a role for you. I have a responsibility for you. I have a destiny for you. I'm going to give you the power to honor the checks of destiny that you've been writing to me. So one of my mandates is to help the body to understand that there's work to do. The kind of work that's at the end of your sleeve. 
work to be what God had always intended you to be before Adam fell in the garden. God is helping us to understand the second Adam has given us renewed assignments to go and be agents of change in this world. And to reimagine, we're going to have to change the way that we perceive and the way that we act. God wanted, wants you to know that all this prayer that you've been praying have not been wasted monologues, but prophetic dialogues. You've been talking to God, but now God is talking to you. He's talking to you about the things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, things that have not even entered into the heart of man. Those things God has prepared for you that, that, love, that, he, that love him. Your prayers have not been wasted, monologue. There's been a prophetic conversation that God has been establishing, and he's calling you. RCF, to begin to reimagine yourself as church because those people God's drawing into this house when the doors open up again, they're looking for a church that has a wine skin that can accommodate their circumstance. They're going to come into the house and they're not, they're, they're not going to know all the rules like you knew the rules. They, they're not going to know all the appropriate um, types of practices and relationships. They're not going to know how to um, give God priorities in their economics. We must ready ourselves and see beyond what our eyes can see before they show up, because they are coming. They've already joined us virtually. And just like it was when, when, um, when, when David was in the cave of Adullah, it's now that people supernaturally are going to be getting the word of the Lord, calling them into this place where they can learn how to be, do, and have what God has ordained for them. There are people that God's drawing into our life space. They, too, bounce checks of destiny that did not clear. And now they are willing to live up to their responsibilities, but they're going to need us to reimagine that we aren't just a social construct. RCF is a nation that God is raising up. There's going to come a time on Pastor Felix and, and Pastor Katani where you're going to have to accelerate your administration because there's going to be a single church in six locations in this Denver metropolitan area. Six locations that will be prophetic teaching centers that will teach the people to take the word and mobilize it into their community. There's a time coming now where the Lord says, hey, I'm going to use you to raise up ministry gifts that won't be religious but devout. They're going to go out into the world and they're going to do the work of the kingdom, of the government, and not just the work of the temple. God is saying that he's raising up a church that will not just restore, but a church that will create. God is saying, come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Genesis 15. Come up and look at the stars. I want you to see what I'm doing in you. I want you to see what I'm doing for you that even your mind cannot conceive. So even some of these things that God is communicating with us, he's not even using words because we, we wouldn't believe the words if you heard them. God is saying that he has been backdooring conversations with you and you didn't realize it. He's been releasing imagery. He's been releasing dreams. He's been releasing inner dreams and external dreams so that you can understand he's calling you to something that you have not known before. Thank you, Lord. God's calling you to take mountains. We, um, in our ministry, we try to help people to understand that uh, the next 40 years, the next 40 years, um, those of us that are, um, are governmental leaders, those that are members of the body, God is on an assignment to manifest a new kind of church that's not restricted to four walls, but understand you're to manifest outside of the wall and that your ministry gifts, they're not going to come from just, just seminaries or, or religious institutions. They're going to be coming from the marketplace. When you look at Jesus' apostles, they didn't come from a local rabbinical center. 
They were entrepreneurs. They were medical people, human developers. They were people that could understand the lens in which God was giving them to go and bring about change. You need to be, begin to be aware of where your assignment is. Because your destiny, not only is it time sensitive, it is atmosphere sensitive. Joseph could not have been the prime minister of Egypt staying in Canaan. Sometime your location that you're at, the place that you're at, God has to move and shift you for your own safety. Because truly, if you are on assignment by God, you will often be in insecure situations with only security coming from God. Often I ask God, you know, I try to be nice to people. Why did this person decide they weren't going to like me? And Abba said, son, they can't like you. Because the spirit in you is contrary to the spirit that's in them. And you're looking at it from a natural perspective, but even they don't even understand. The spirit inside of them understands what's inside of you. And the Lord said, look, I want you to understand, don't be afraid because I am with you. I've given you friends. I've given you friends in your camp. I've even given you friends in the enemy's camp. Be not afraid. I am with you. It's time for us to reimagine. Luke 5, 37 talks to us about the new wineskin. Some, some, there are still pastors and leaders and community people and members that are trying to put the old church back in the bottle, you know, bring it out of the bottle. When God has brought a new church, you can't go back to that. I wonder how many days Pastor Felix felt so foolish having all this television equipment. People not watching TV no more, Pastor, with all this camera stuff until COVID-19 shows up. <laughs> and with the word of the Lord, this ministry was able to seamlessly move forward without missing a beat. We need to free up our leaders to have a kingdom intelligence. Church, and understand church is not religion. It's a government. A government that God has raised up in the uh, assembly, the temple, is the human resource department. This is where the people are coming to discover who they are and to be trained to go out to the seven mountains of influence and exercise our Father's dominion. We're talking about mobilizing our gospel. Our gospel is a gospel of dominion. And if we are not willing to wake up to the gospel and the work we're called to do is a dominion work, if we leave that void, there are other gospel kingdoms that will take the place if we are not willing. Islam will gladly take our place. After we don't got people saved and we don't disciple them to go into their calling, Islam will come around and say, hey, look at my skin. Look at my message. I'll take you to the next level. You, you're Christian now. You got the spiritual power. Let me lay some Islam dominion on you. Our, our children's generation are not looking for an inspirational gospel. They're looking for a power gospel. With signs and wonders and working of miracles, we are mandated by God to reimagine church. A church that is devout but not religious. Thank you, Lord. A lot of us have um, um, coming into our kingdom identity and realizing we don't fit. I want to fit. I want to I be liked by everybody. I want to be understood by everybody. But God is saying, I want you to reimagine church collectively, but also individually. God's raising up a people that won't go to church, but a people that will be the church. God is raising up a people that's not going to go to the job. You're going to be the job. You know, in, in, our, in our consecration, our family, 
in our ministry, you uh, usually do about 40 or 52 days of fasting and prayer from the end of the year to the, the beginning of the year. And the Lord had given us this verse, Ecclesiastic 7, 13. And it basically, in summary, um, says, um, and I'll let you guys show the slide for that. Um, what God has made crooked, let no man make straight. We've been a triangle, and we've been trying to fit us in a circle. There is a place where you fit, you prosper, and you excel by reason of the calling and the destiny upon your life. And it's a powerful calling because there were 500 million con contractors, heavenly contractors, tr trying to be you. But God chose you. God chose you. How come you think you can do this, this big dream that you have? God chose me. I got called off the bleachers. God called me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm letting you soak in that word. <laughs> what you need to understand that in our society, 97% of people do not understand they even have a destiny. They don't understand that they have purpose driving them. And a destination, a destiny um, that's drawing people, places, and things, driving us to a certain place. In our book, Destiny, The Other Side of Through, um, the, the collective of writers, we had, one, we had an assignment. And that's to help people to understand that your destiny, my destiny, it's a direct route. But it's never a straight line. Tell your, tell your neighbor, tell, tell the people sitting in your living room, your destiny, it's a direct route, but it's never a straight line. That, that, that's one of the biggest deceptions of the adversary, to make us think that everything that God's called us to do is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be without opposition or resistance. If you have a vision and a dream that is not facing any opposition or any resistance, you don't know this, but you are already a prisoner of war. The adversary doesn't have unlimited resources, so he has to attack those that are real threat. Your destiny is a direct route, but it's never a straight line. Do not be moved by your warfare. <laughs> it's God paying honor to you. Do not be moved by the trial and the testings of the circumstances. You've already gotten an A if you would stay faithful. <laughs> Don't worry that they did not accept you. Don't worry that they, you, you were in the, um, in the crowd, in the, in the group. Well, God has made crooked. Let no man make straight. You're bent that way for a reason. You're bent to bring deliverance. You're, built to, you're bent to create businesses. You are bent to transform people with information. You're bent. God's asking us to reimagine the church as a nation, not just a, as a social group. We are a people group that are connected by a common kingdom identity. Doesn't matter what our race is. Doesn't matter what our background is. But your race is going to matter. Your background is going to matter because it's a part of your destiny assignment. A people um, that are going to be joined by a common um, creative kingdom language. That's unique, unique to us. That people come here looking for jobs, but they go out starting a business. People come here with a, a broken marriage, and they realize the marriage is just bent for now. God's bending it to come into a new direction. We are a church that understands God has sovereignty. God is sovereign. We're not going to give the devil credit. Maybe, you're, maybe your mate's not saved yet. Don't let that move you. What God has made crooked, let no man make straight. Maybe you're in a, in a business, um, in a, working in a business that you love more than it loves you. Don't worry about it. 
Let's begin to recognize God's purpose and destiny for us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Can we take the uh, next slide? (laughs) You need to be aware that humanity and the body of Christ has been unconscious and sleep to what God had intended them to be. But God is changing this. 97% of the people are really unconscious of purposes. They don't know how God has shaped them for purpose and design. 97%. That means if you're in a group of 10, only three of you are going to be woke. You don't believe me? Ask the group. What's your purpose and your destiny? And they're going to go, hamana, 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 hamana. Because they're unconscious. Because we come from cultures and homes and societies that do not want us to understand truly what we are supposed to be. They want us to be followers and not the leaders that God has called us to be. We are a race of leaders. Can we get the next slide? This is what the world's been doing. They're unconscious. But God says, look, I'm going to lay some COVID-19 on you. (laughs) You're going to see that you're still dependent on me. That this is an hour of Micah 6, 8, where each and every one of us need to begin to deal with how we are living our lives in this world. Are we living our lives justly? Are we treating others just justly? People that that are image bearers of the Most High God? Have you been treating people as though they were Jesus with kindness? Have you been honoring on the call to take care of those that are most vulnerable amongst us? And have you been walking humbly before God? Treating God like, um, I'm the only one you got in this game. I got to tell you, Western nations, you need to come to repentance because there are third world nations that are not ashamed of being a nation under God. And part of what our missionary work here in the, um, in the, what they call the first world, those um, ecclesias that are in the third world, we have to lend assistance to our brothers and sisters that are in China, that's, that's in the Asian continent, um, those, of, those of our brothers and sisters that are in um, the African continent as they are forming a nation in the image of God, a continent, a people, a nation that will be nations inside of a nation. It's not a shame of acknowledging the power and the dominion of God. Let's go to the next slide because I'm coming to the end. God wants us to know that our prayers have not been wasted monologues, but prophetic dialogues. <laughs> Amen? Prophetic dialogues to move us into visionizing and playing chess with him. God's asking you to strategize with him of taking dominion over this world through the knowledge of witty inventions God has been given to you. And God is dealing with us about our literacy and about our power. (laughs) Praise God. You know, Pastor, you know, one of the things, and I'm going to call you up real soon, um, that we have to do is that our people need to know who they are in Christ but they need to also know who they are in the world through Christ. A lot of the trouble and the unrest in our nation is because we have not lived up to the fullness of our potential. This is why we wrote this book, Destiny on the Other Side of Through. Your destiny is a direct route. It's not a straight line. You're going to need to be connected to a synergy uh, group that is called church that understand that we are mandated to nurture you, to train you, to activate you, to walk into what God has in store for you. A couple of um, chapters Pastor Katani will need to make sure that we challenge the church to do is that's to um, read Genesis, the 11th chapter, 12th chapter, 15th chapter, 17th chapter. There is a message that God has for us. He wants us to imagine, to come away and imagine with him, to walk in the fullness that he has in store for us. And these passages are going to see that God's calling us to walk away from the familiar and to walk into the fullness of the destiny that God has ordained for us. Pastor, thank you. Thank you very much.
the Lord. What a word. What a word. Come on. Wherever you find yourself, and take that. What a word. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. Don't go too far. Amen. I, I, let, me, let me just say this. This word has been so rich. I'm just going to say it's been so rich. It's been very encouraging. Our worship team is going to come. And I just want to take a moment just to pray with you, just to minister with you. And I want to invite you Wednesday. I, 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 um, I, 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 I have pages of notes. <laughs> I want to I wanna continue the conversation, if I could use that term. Because I think this is a right now word. I'm just going to say it this way. I think this is a right now word for the church. Sometimes as a leader, you spend so much time preaching and preparing that you don't take time to sit down and get fed. And I was sharing with my wife that I was in this mold, in this place. When I reached out to you, I've been reaching out to, we have a preaching team here, interestingly enough, and I've been reaching out to our team and saying, hey, Pastor Felix, need a break. And all of them say, you're on your own, bro. No, <laughs> they didn't really say it like that, but they just, you know, planned. You kind of get it. And I was praying, Lord, who can I get to come? And the Lord placed you on my heart. And I'm just going to say it was an encouraging word and a word that fed my soul. I'm just going to say that. It's a word that fed my soul. And I needed that. I needed that. So I want to continue the conversation. I, I believe that God has you in this space, in this moment to speak to us. So I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you for allowing God to use you. And Wednesday, we're going to continue this conversation, right? Amen. Amen. We're going to thank God for what he's doing. Bless you. Amen. Come on. Yeah, amen. Show this man of God some love and appreciation. Thank you.